It's music theory online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with music theory online. Hi, everybody, and welcome to module five. Just as a review, what we covered in our last module was notation. We talked about the note head and the stem and the flag or the tail of the note, the direction that the stems would go, as well as all the various rests and how to write the rests. We also talked about how we beam notes together. So we covered how to write music. This week in Module 5, we're going to be talking about time. Our last module, we talked about pitch and how to write the pitch. Now we're going to talk about how we organize our pitches into time. Our beats are always divided into pulses. The pulses can be strong or weak pulses, but they are divided into units that are of equal length. The tempo is the rate of speed of your beat. You've seen in your music, sometimes you'll see a note and then it'll equal let's say 144. That means that you would set your metronome to 144 and you would get 144 beats per minute. Often composers will write down exactly what the tempo is of the piece of music that you're playing. And that's one way they do it is with the metronome. The metronome is the most precise way of conveying your wishes as the composer to the performer. You also see music that might say adagio or lento or largo. Those are all very, very slow. So you know that the tempo of those pieces would be slow. If it says presto, prestissimo, or vivace, vivo, those are all tempos that would be very quick. Beats group themselves into regular patterns of two or more beats. This pattern is repeated frequently, and often the first beat in the pattern is stronger. These beat patterns are grouped together in measures of music. So each beat pattern is divided by a bar line. So when we measure our music into repeated beat patterns with the recurring accents, we're grouping it by the measure or the bar line. And each of these beat patterns, as I said before, forms a bar or a measure. What we're really talking about today is simple time. What that means is you have either two or three or four beats within each measure. That would mean that your time signature would have a two, a three, or a four. If there's two beats per bar, it's called simple duple time. Duple means two. Your beat pattern is going to be strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. And you're going to have two beats in each measure of music. If you have three beats per bar, that's called simple triple time. Triple means three. In simple triple time, our strong beat is still always on the first beat. It's going to be strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak. And our pattern is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If there are four beats per bar, we're in simple quadruple time. And of course, quadruple means four. We have still have our strong beat on the first beat, and it's strong, weak, medium, weak, strong, weak, medium, weak. One, two, three, four. We're going to look at time signatures now. The time signature always has two numbers, as I'm sure you've noticed in your music. The top number is going to tell us how many beats are in each measure of music, and the bottom number is going to tell you what kind of note gets one beat. So on the slide that you're looking at, it says 
four two. That means that there's four beats in each measure and a half note is going to get one beat. So this is simple quadruple when we have a four on the top. When we're in simple duple time, we're going to have two beats in each measure and the bottom note is going to give us the unit beat. So our time signatures in simple duple time can be 2, two 2, 4, or 2, 8. If the time signature is 2, 2, that means we have two half notes in each measure. 2, 4 means that there's two quarter notes in each measure, and 2, 8 means that there are two eighth notes in each measure. In simple triple time, the top number is always going to be 3. So we could have 3-2, which means that there would be three half notes in each measure. 3-4 would be three quarter notes in each measure. Or 3-8, three, eight, three eighth notes in each measure. In simple quadruple time, we have four beats in each measure. And again, the bottom note is going to give us the unit beat. So 4-2 would mean that we have four half notes in each measure. 4-4 four, four would be four quarter notes in each measure, and 4-8 would be four eighth notes in each measure. Here's a chart to show us how all of our time signatures work in simple time. If our time signature is 3-4, that means that there's three beats per measure, and a quarter note is going to get one beat. In 3-2, we have three beats per measure, and a half note gets one beat. And we know that those would be simple triple times. Two eight would be two beats per bar, and an eighth note gets one beat. That would be simple duple. Three sixteen would be three beats per bar, and a sixteenth note gets one beat. You could have four one, and that would be four beats per bar, and a whole note is getting one beat. In four eight, we have four eighth notes, and in 4-4, four, four, we would have four quarter notes. Now let's just review our time signatures here. The time signatures are written to the right of the clef sign, and they are written within the staff. You don't want your time signatures to be larger than your staff or smaller than your staff. It should cover the whole staff. Also, your time signatures must be written in the treble clef and the bass clef. The top number is going to take up your top two spaces and it's going to sit on line three. The bottom note is going to take the bottom two spaces and it's going to sit on the first line. The number on the bottom can only be the same as the type of notes that we've learned. So the bottom number can be a two, that would mean that a half note would get one beat. A four, which would mean a quarter note gets one beat. An eight, which would mean an eighth note would get one beat. Or even a one, which would mean a whole note would get one beat. Time signatures are written at the beginning of your staff, but it's only written once. It's only written at the beginning of your piece of music. It's not written on each line. Don't put a line between your two numbers in your time signature. It's not a fraction. And if you see that line, that's just because somebody's trying to duplicate the third line. Don't write a line there. Ever, 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 ever. So today we've covered simple time and how your time signatures work. And also how your, your strong beats fall within each measure. For homework, you'll be working with time this week. So I think you'll find this really interesting, and you'll probably be looking at your music now with a better understanding of how your time signatures work. I hope you have a super duper week, and I'll see you soon. It's Music Theory Online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with music theory online